The ongoing confrontation between India and China along the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh is being described as the biggest military confrontation since the Kargil War of 1999. According to the Indian Army, a violent face-off ensued on Monday night between the Indian Army troops and the People's Liberation Army troops of China during the de-escalation process underway in the Galwan Valley, Ladakh, which left 20 casualties on the Indian side, while ANI reported 43 casualties on the Chinese side. The Chinese are the aggressors in the ongoing military tussle and therefore there is a massive wave of anti-China sentiment across India. The Chinese state media, especially the CCP-owned media tabloid Global Times, suffered a massive meltdown soon after the Indian Army's initial statement on casualties. After the Indian media picked up the story, the Chinese media too has been making a big issue out of the casualties suffered on their side. The logic behind these Chinese reports is simple. Beijing's state-owned media wants to save their country and the PLA from India's wrath. China might keep speaking of the 1962 Sino-India war, but even the CCP mouthpieces understand that the equations have changed drastically in the past 58 years. What is guiding China's military doctrine and the actions is not the 1962 war, but the recent past of India's military doctrine that involves lethal retaliation and effective preemptive strikes. The post-2015 military doctrine of India is playing on China's minds. Beijing knows what happened after the Uri terror attack in 2016. There was massive outrage within the Indian military establishment, political circles and media outlets. Prime Minister Modi stepped up diplomatic pressure on Pakistan at multilateral forums. Pakistan and ISI export terrorism into India in cahoots with terror outfits like lashkar e Toyba and jaish e Mohammed. PM Modi's diplomatic outreach ensured that global perception favoured India. This soon culminated into the 2016 surgical strikes as India's special para forces crossed the line of control between India and Pakistan and went on to impose massive costs on Pakistani terror establishments. India declared the 2016 surgical strikes to the world at large. These were preemptive and not provocative strikes and the international community endorsed India's right to protect itself against cross-border terrorism. Prime Minister Modi's strategy is effective and lethal and it has really become the basis of India's military doctrine. This is why New Delhi resorted to the same strategy last year as well. The February 14th Pulwama Fidain attack orchestrated by Pakistan was bigger than the 2016 Uri terror attack and thus India's reply was also more lethal and precise. India upped the ante and went a step higher in the escalatory ladder. The Indian Air Force was pressed into service. Needless to mention that the global opinion was one of hostility against Pakistan and PM Modi's diplomatic outreach had ensured that Pakistan was viewed as a terror state. This created the space for India to strike hard and deep into Pakistan territory. Indian Air Force fighter jets crossed Pakistani airspace and went several kilometers into Pakistan territory. The jaish e Mohammed madrasas, which are used as terror training camps, were struck and struck hard. They were annihilated and heavy casualties were inflicted upon jaish e Mohammed. Modi government and the Ministry of External Affairs stepped up diplomatic pressure on Pakistan and made it clear that the strikes were preemptive and were supposed to avert more terror attacks against the Indian state, something that was recognized by the world at large and Pakistan stood ostracized. The Indian Army hits back when the enemy attacks and inflicts disproportionate casualties on the enemy. Beijing understands and fears Prime Minister Modi's strategy and New Delhi's military doctrine. Once the Indian Army issued a statement revealing casualties on the Indian side, a colonel ranking commanding officer and two jawans, the Indian media started reporting the event extensively. Nationwide outrage is growing against China even as we speak about the military confrontation. High-level meetings have happened including the one among Prime Minister Modi, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and the External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar. There is no reason why India won't step up the diplomatic pressure on China, especially at a time when Beijing is already reeling under a global backlash for hiding the COVID-19 pandemic and causing lakhs of deaths across the world. In fact, global media picked up the issue soon after the initial reports came out, with British media outlet Daily Express carrying an angry story titled World War III, 
India slaughters five Chinese soldiers in bloody massacre, border tensions erupt. Things are moving ahead in New Delhi, and even the Ministry of External Affairs has hit out at China, stating, while it was our expectation that this would unfold smoothly, the Chinese side departed from the consensus to respect the line of actual control in the Galwan Valley. On the late evening and night of 15th June 2020, a violent face-off happened as a result of an attempt by the Chinese side to unilaterally change the status quo there. Both sides suffered casualties that could have been avoided had the agreement at the higher level been scrupulously followed by the Chinese side. India is going to build pressure against China for its unilateral actions and punish China for crossing its limits. Beijing is rattled and its propaganda machinery is trying to weave a new narrative. As per latest reports, however, India has moved fighter jets, warships to forward bases after the high voltage escalations in Ladakh. The Navy has also been given the go-ahead to deploy its assets near the Malacca Strait and, if needed, anywhere else in the Indo-Pacific to counter Chinese action, an Economic Times report said. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has sought to blame India. Its spokesperson said, our border troops had a high-level meeting and reached important consensus on easing the border situation. But astonishingly, on June 15th, the Indian troops seriously violated our consensus and twice crossed the borderline for illegal activities and provoked and attacked Chinese personnel, which led to serious physical contact between the two sides. Meanwhile, Global Times has regurgitated the same, claiming that India is the aggressor and has also confirmed severe clashes and casualties. This is a part of the Chinese propaganda to blame India for the violent face-off that could very easily become a diplomatic tussle, paving way for disproportionate retaliation from India. Hu Shi Jin, editor-in-chief of CCP-run tabloid Global Times, also tweeted, Based on what I know, Chinese side also suffered casualties in the Galwan Valley physical clash. I want to tell the Indian side, don't be arrogant and misread China's restraint as being weak. China doesn't want to have a clash with India, but we don't fear it. Beijing hasn't released its casualty figures, and the Global Times editor-in-chief says, Chinese side didn't release number of PLA casualties in clash with Indian soldiers. My understanding is, the Chinese side doesn't want people of the two countries to compare the casualty numbers so as to avoid stoking public mood. This is goodwill from Beijing. This is the narrative that the CCP is trying to push. Goodwill. After provoking tensions and attacking Indian soldiers during the de-escalation process, the Chinese media has the guts to talk about goodwill. Reality is being compromised because if the picture becomes clearer, the Indian diplomatic and military establishment will not let it go easily. The lie of China showing restraint and India provoking tensions is being reiterated because the Chinese state media wants to protect its terracotta soldiers from the Indian army's wrath. Moreover, the global public opinion about China is at its lowest. China cannot afford any more bad PR.